Okay. Uh, really, just uh, an incredible effort by both teams. Uh, exactly the way we described the game to our players, getting ready for this game. We, you know, we obviously, I do certainly have the utmost respect, and our team does for the University of Texas and our program, and the fact that so many guys on that bench that have been a huge part of my life, I'm thankful for. But proud of the effort. I mean, th these are the kind of games in the tournament you get bounced when you shoot as poorly as we did. And, uh, but we found a way with our defense. The 10 extra shots that we got uh, were obviously important to us, but to shoot the ball as poorly as we did and all we kept talking about during timeouts was keep taking our shots and we got to get it done on the defensive end. And again, they run some really good stuff. We felt if we did what we needed to do that they would end up going to their matchup zone and we got looks out of it, didn't convert it, but yet we kept our poise and they got really aggressive at there at the end trying to drive it downhill. But again, just really proud of our, again, proud of our team and the way they stayed with it on the night where we just struggled shooting the ball. Okay, questions first for uh, Dalton Tobey and uh, Jos Josiah Jordan. Josiah Jordan. Josiah, Josiah Jordan. Josiah. I'm sorry. All good. He told like, me three like times. Josiah. I still messed it up. <laughs> Ryan Sylvia, Rivals.com. Dalton, just what was that moment like at the end of the game, ball in your hands, kind of game on the line? Uh, I wanted the ball in my hands. I told Z that uh, when we were walking out of that timeout saying I want the ball in my hands and you know he had trusted me as well as the whole team had trusted me to despite my shooting performance today they had trusted me to go take those shots and I can't thank my teammates and coaching staff enough. Second row. Uh, Tobey that, that first half I know you got in some foul trouble but you, know, you scored eight quick points at a time when you know Tennessee was really struggling to score just you know, how, how big of a boost did you feel like that gave the team in the, in the first 20 minutes? Uh, I think it definitely gave us a boost. I think overall my mindset was just to play aggressive but composed. Obviously got into some foul trouble, but I think, I think it's just a credit to our guards um, finding me in the right place and making it easy for me to score. Right, Niall. Uh, any of you can kind of answer this, but I wanted to direct it to Dalton. You, I, I think after you hit that three, a little under six minutes left, it looked like you took this big sigh of relief, kind of shook your head, like, where has that been all, all game? What's it like when you're kind of going through? Your, I'm sure you felt not that different from a normal game, but when the shots aren't falling that way, how do you kind of manage that mentally? Um, I mean, I just said thank you finally. Uh, I seen one go down, but uh, I'm not really too focused on that because uh, scoring is, you know, it's all right, but you got to lock up on the other end, and that was what I was trying to focus on the most when my shots weren't falling and trying to do the little things that uh, could impact the game, like rebounding and stuff like that, send screens. Other questions for the student athletes? Front left. Tobey, I know Coach Barnes, usually when you get two fouls, you're done for the half. Were you surprised to go back in? Yeah, I asked him for another chance. Uh, I thought I got that second one. He put me back in. I don't think he realized I had a second one. Um, obviously picked up that third, unfortunately, but I think it's just a testament to the trust I'm starting the game. Other questions for student athletes? Next one, third row. Yeah. Dalton, anything defensively that they were doing differently to you? It looked like you maybe didn't get as many touches early on. Or was that just the way the game went, or were they doing something to deny you that much? Um, they were just playing uh, physical defense. They were just running me off my uh, screens and stuff and hedging the <coughs> balls, making uh, ball screens and making everything just super tough for me, contesting my shots. They played great team defense. They were in the gaps and, you know, uh, just get ready to go watch film with coach and just learn from it, learn to be that much better and, you know, just get better. Second round. Josiah, you, hit, you hadn't hit a three in a couple of games. I don't even think you took one Thursday. And for you to raise up and hit that one it was a huge shot. We just started three minutes left. I mean, what's going through your mind? What's your confidence level like as a player to take that shot in that situation? Yeah, my confidence level, uh, first and foremost, it comes from the work that I put in. You know, each and every guy here, we believe that we're the hardest working team in the country. And so we get in situations like that. You know, you just got to rely on your work. And then obviously, uh, my confidence comes from my coaches and my teammates. Every time out, every huddle, they're telling everybody to be aggressive, stay confident. And so it just goes back to my work and obviously my teammates.
Rick Butler, Rocky Top Insider. Josiah, Zakai didn't come off the floor tonight, played 40 minutes. Just what does that say about his passion and his will to win as you go through the tournament? Yeah, there was one point, I don't know if it was in the first half or the second half, coach asked him, like, I was on the bench and coach was like, are you good? And Zakai looked at him kind of crazy, like, yeah, of course I'm good. Like, why would you even ask me something like that? Um, but. Like, he, he's just a superhero. Like, we obviously wouldn't be in this, situ in this position without his leadership, his aggressiveness. Um, he's, you know, the, the engine that unites us. And, you know, we thrive off of him. And, you know, for him to play 40 minutes in a situation like this, I don't think he would want to have it any other way. Um, and, you know, that's just a testament to how tough he is. We'll take one more question for the student athlete. Back row. Uh, Ed Sutton, Sporting News uh, for Dalton. Uh, a few days ago, you were saying that you were just kind of trying to take in the experience of playing in the NCAA tournament. Now that you've had two games, you're, you and Tennessee are looking to, to snap a streak of, you know, not, not making it to the Elite Eight. What, how have you kind of felt you've adjusted to playing in these games? And, you know, what have you learned from these first two that you think can help carry over to the next few? Um, just be a lot more physical. Uh, you know, it's a grown man's game, uh, you know. Just be ready to go out and take the first or give the first hit, and um, just keep learning uh, f and film with Coach Barnes and the rest of the coaching staff, and as well as just uh, just going out there and competing with my teammates is just you know we just going out there hooping and stuff. Okay, guys, thanks. You can head back to the locker room. I know there'll be more members of the media waiting for you there. Okay, we'll continue. Questions for Coach. Back right. Josh Graham, WSJS. Coach, you said there are a lot of special people on the other side of the bench. Now that the dust is settled, how special was this weekend for you, considering where this regional was and how it shook out for you guys? Well, uh, you know, my first year in college uh, coaching uh, as a volunteer at Davidson, our very my very first game as a volunteer assistant, we played at the Yoke Charlotte Coliseum. And uh, we won our first game there against Brown. And I still had that watch that uh, said that and we were the Charlotte Invitational champions. And uh, that was our goal coming here. And I said, we're in the Charlotte Invitational Tournament right now. There's four teams. And uh, again, I can't tell you how much respect I have for, uh, I could talk all night about Texas and, and uh, their staff. I'm looking at one of my favorite players sitting right there that was the first high school player that we signed at the University of Texas, Chris Ogden, and he's truly like a son to me. And, uh, you know, I, it, the game played exactly how I knew they were going to play so hard. They knew we were going to play hard. They did an incredible job on Dalton, uh, and uh, we knew shots were going to be hard to come by. We, we did feel it. If we could maybe get inside a little bit, uh, thought we could get them in some ball screen. But, and we had some looks, and, and we knew they were going to go to a matchup at some point. Uh, we knew that was coming because the last time we played them, we saw it. And we got the shots that we thought we could get out of it and some back cuts. But uh, uh, I'm just, again, it's, that, just so you know, that tournament was probably about, what, 45 years ago, you know, whatever it was as long as I've been in it. But, just proud of our team, but really proud of the effort of both teams. I thought both teams played their hearts out. And to win a game like this when you shoot as poorly as we did, and they had something to do with that. Don't Again, I don't – there were some shots that we forced, but their defense was there. But to win a game like this in this tournament, you know, again, I'm just proud of the effort our guys put in there on the defensive end. Fourth row right in front of us. Rick Butler, Rocky Top Insider. Rick, Josiah just told that story about you asking Zakai if you needed a break, him looking at you like you were a little crazy. Can you talk about that interaction and just what Zakai playing 40 minutes did for this team tonight? Well, I will tell you this, probably the most, uh, and the coaches have learned to say it to me in a certain way. They, they will say to me, hey, coach, it's 12, 15 on the clock or 16, 10, whatever. Do you think we should get Zakai out? And my answer is, I'll ask him. And, and I do. I mean, I look at him. Uh, he's an iron man, you know, and uh, he, I mean, he, he never takes himself out in practice, you know, and believe me, we practice hard. And I asked him, I said, you good, you good? You, and he, and he, and I trust him. And uh, even though he had a tough night shooting the ball, uh, he, uh, it's just the little things that he does out there. The one stat that was probably good for us, I think their guards turned it over 10 times and we got 10 extra shots, but, uh, and the points off the turnovers was really probably the difference in the game, really. But uh, 
his pressure defensively. And, but, but to answer that question, he was tired because they had a rim shot on a, that last possession down there, and he was the guy that didn't block out. And he knows I'm going to get him for it because we we kept talking about we can't ever leave this tournament with somebody not blocking out, and we were fortunate they missed that follow up there at the end. Second row, coach, you stole my thunder a little bit. You mentioned it, but you talked yesterday a lot about sometimes you you don't shoot the ball well, but you play well, and, and people don't realize it. Was this just a classic example of, of that? Well, I think we played well defensively, and again, they they do some really good things. And uh, you know, we we wanted to take away the paint. You know, we were obviously concerned about A. Smith. You know, and I think uh, Jim Mayshack did a good job. Santi did. A good, we we lost him one time. You know, he does a really good job of uh, some things we were concerned about. We saw that a lot of people wouldn't guard. Uh, uh, let me see here. Make sure I get it right. Uh, Dylan Mitchell, and we were going to guard him. We believe in ball pressure because we watched a lot of teams stay back, and he does a good job. They got him really dribbling that, letting him come off, get some separation. We only gave that to him one time, and, and, and he hit it. And uh, that was a, a big play at that point in time for them. But we, uh, again, we just kept talking about uh, we're going to put it on our defense. We've got to take the shots when we get them, but we've got to put it on the – and they did some good stuff at the end of the game, getting downhill. Z uh, missed his close out, and uh, Tyrese went by him for some layups, and we gave him a couple no, uh, you know, no pass paint touches, which you can't give to anyone. And but um, overall, uh, is exactly the kind of game we thought it would play out to be. Third row, West Rucker, twenty four seven Sports. Rick, I know that coaches say that there's no secrets this time of year because there's so much tape and so much access to knowing stuff. In a game like this, with how well y'all know each other, how difficult would it be to sort of throw something that the other wouldn't expect? Well, you, you can, but again, even even with that, there, there's they play so hard. We play hard, and uh, you know, it's, you expect players to be able to adjust. I mean, we we did uh, something that they probably hadn't seen us do much, and and honestly, I watched it. I, I watched uh, saw it on film today. Uh, where we went to a naked side, a naked side ball screen uh, right there at the elbow area. We we had watched that uh, actually uh, in one of their games late in the year, and we hadn't done much of that, and we got a lot out of it. And that's when they decided to go zone, but you know we didn't show it in the first half, and we wanted to get some stuff, and we and we got some we got some some action out of it. Last question to our right aisle. Uh, Rick, Tom Izzo was in here yesterday and, and was asked about you in this matchup, and he said he thought maybe you weren't appreciated enough during your time at Texas. I know you love the guys on the other side of the bench, but just given the way things ended there and getting this win, is there any part of you that just says, like, that's a little sweeter than normal? Honestly, not really. Uh, I, I do think that, Augie, haven't we played three years in a row? Yeah, we've played three years in a row, so we went there. They came to a hard game at, in, uh, before they closed down the Irwin Center. That was different because I'd never coached in the Irwin Center on different. But last year they came in, and uh, this year, and what it's becoming is going to become a really good rivalry in the league because they're coming into the league. And uh, but I, honestly, I, 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 I don't, and I don't want to. Somebody think I'm being disrespectful, but I've been away nine years, and uh, that's a long time, really, in, in this in this sport. And I'm, I'm happy for Texas and the staff they have because one, I know how much those guys love that university. I mean, that guy right there, born and bred a Texan, you know, and and uh, I know how much it meant to him to give up a head coaching job to go back because they wanted to build on and really try to put the family back together that was there for 17 years and. I think they saw that. I think TJ was here tonight. What he, he he left. He, he I know he texted me, but today I got a lot of texts this afternoon from a lot of my former players, and uh, and I'm, you know, we, we there's a love affair there. Then a family that, and I'm and I'm part of that family, and I and I always will be, and and uh, but I'm just thankful that God has blessed me with the opportunity to be at a lot of great universities and 17 years there now, nine here at Tennessee and. Honestly, I couldn't be in a better place than I am right now. And I'm just, again, it's, it is what it is. And uh, I'm just excited we're moving on because a year ago, we were a good team. 
and uh, Zakai went down, and we really had to recreate ourselves at, at the end of the year. And we won games like this to get to the Sweet 16 a year ago. We struggled to score, but we won these kind of games. And, and actually, the older guys kept saying, we've been here before. We know what we got to do. And uh, I've got to believe, and I'm certainly hoping it, it seems like the lid's been on the basket for the last two weeks. And, and I, whether people believe it or not, I think we can shoot the ball. And if we can do that, it'll give us obviously chances. But we got here, we came here to, to win this tournament and uh, these four teams, and uh, we get a chance to move on. And I just have so much respect. And I said it yesterday, and I said it to the St. Peter's uh, program. They got a lot, you get to this tournament, you, you've got a lot to be proud of. I don't care who it is. And, uh, but uh, I love Tom Izzo. I mean, he and I got in this together, and he does, uh, as soon as he lost the game, he came in the locker room and, and hugged me. And I hugged him, and uh, we've grown up in this business together, and he's a guy that has done it the right way all the time. Never, I mean, you couldn't ask for a better guy to represent your university, and he had been successful wherever he went, but uh, he just, I mean, he's an, a legend, an institution there at Michigan State, and uh, there aren't many of us left of that era, but uh, I'm just, again, thank God for the opportunities that he's given me and the blessings because it's, it's, it really is a blessing. Thank you, Coach. Good right, luck next week. Thank you.